While the crew has uh, been working this morning, activities have also been taking place down at the Kennedy Space Center. The shuttle carrier aircraft, which is uh, NASA's uh, very large 747 uh, jumbo jet that carries the space shuttle on its back, arrived down there at the uh, shuttle landing facility on the very same runway that uh, Discovery landed on uh, more than a year ago after it wrapped up its final mission, STS-133. There is a live view of the Kennedy Space Center there at the shuttle landing facility. The 747 will spend the next uh, several days uh, getting Discovery um, secured to it and uh, ready for the flight up to uh, Washington, D.C. Discovery heading up to the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. It will take off on April uh, 17th, should arrive up in D.C. and uh, be unveiled to the public there. Uh, on the 19th. We have a chance now to talk to two of the crew members who will be flying uh, that mission. This will be technically Discovery's last flight. We have Jeff Moultrie on the phone who is the shuttle carrier aircraft pilot who will be uh, flying that uh, particular leg of the flight. We also have Henry Taylor who is a, a flight engineer for that particular aircraft. So good morning to both of you, Jeff and Henry. How are you guys doing down there in Florida? Hey, good morning, Josh. How are you? Good morning. Doing fine. Doing well. So you guys flew in uh, yesterday straight from Edwards Air Force Base in uh, Dryden. How was the flight over to Florida? It was a, it was a good flight. It was a, a long flight for us, about, I don't know, a little over, uh, about five and a half hours. So um, it was a nice flight, nice weather pretty much the whole way. Could you actually make that flight in, uh, in one hop? Because typically, you know, if you've got the shuttle in the back, you guys have to stop a couple times because it's not exactly uh, fuel efficient. So <laughs> could you actually make it in one pass or did you have to stop somewhere? No, we made it in uh, one complete flight. Uh, we took off at 9, 9, 10 in the morning and landed here at uh, 1435 California time. So talk about what's next for the plane. I mean, what do you guys have to do over the next couple of days to get it ready and to uh, get Discovery uh, put up on the back of it? Well, today and the next uh, day or so, uh, the technicians at the Kennedy Space Center will be installing the uh, balls and pedestals, which is uh, where Discovery aft mounts will be. Uh, we'll also be putting fuel on the airplane, uh, doing any other preparations that uh, need to be done, inspections and things like that. And then once uh, Discovery gets put on there, you guys will be good to go. Is there, uh, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, you guys have, have flown these flown these these types of jets for, for a while. Kind of talk to the layman about what is it like to actually have a shuttle that big and something on the back of that airplane, and, and how different is it to take off and land with something that heavy uh, on that 747? Uh, this is Jeff. I, I, I think the, the, the really, uh, the portion of the flight that's, that's quite a bit different is, is the takeoff portion. Um, we use quite a bit of runway length uh, with a, the mated um, FTA. Um, the uh, en route and uh, descent landing portions are, are not so, so different than flying a, um, uh, for example, a commercial airliner. But the takeoff, um, due to the uh, drag factor of the, uh, of the shuttle, um, the, the performance is degraded. Um, and uh, so we have to be uh, quite careful with our um, our speeds and um, in in the climb, but um, once we get in the in route structure, it's it's pretty much business as normal. It's like a, a normal jet. So you guys are going to be doing a flyover of DC. We've seen the news that uh, you know, if weather permitting, you'll have a chance to fly over some of the landmarks over the the, the National Mall and then head out to the airport. Um, have you guys ever done anything like that before? Is this sort of the first time you're going to be able to see some of these things from that vantage point? Uh, for me, yes. I think the uh, we're doing the flyover first of, of the Kennedy Space Center, and then we're going uh, up the East Coast to do uh, the D.C. area flyover. Um, certainly, it's going to be a first for me uh, with with uh, um, a mated FCA. But um, I have, of course, flown in and out of Washington National before, but uh, never uh, never with the shuttle. But uh, it's going to be a pretty uh, historic flight, I think, and. Um, with our proximity to some of the uh, monuments and the Capitol building and the White House. So it's going to be a pretty neat day. Now, Henry, you're the flight engineer, and, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to be flying uh, a couple of different legs up to D.C. and then on to uh, New York, correct? Talk about, about what you're going to be doing during those, during those legs. We're going to have uh, just one leg from KSC to D.C., and then when Discovery is offloaded and Enterprise is loaded, it'll be a, a different flight from Dulles to New York. Um, we're going to be pretty heavy taking off from KSC, so 
climb out will be slower than, than we would if we didn't have it. But the weight going from New York to, uh, I'm sorry, from Dulles to New York is, is, is much lighter, but it's still heavy. How long have both of you guys been uh, flying this type of aircraft? How, how long have you been with NASA? This is Henry. I've been with NASA since 1979, and I started flying on the shuttle carrier aircraft in 1989. I spent 30 years as a flight simulation engineer on the sh shuttle training aircraft, um, doing training of all the crews that have ever flown the, the shuttle. Uh, also fly on the Super Guppy as a flight engineer. And Jeff? And, uh, Jeff, and that, that, that was, uh, I was just a kid when uh, uh, Henry started. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I've been with NASA for 11 years, and I've been uh, on the shuttle carrier since uh, I, I got to uh, Johnson Space Center in 2004. Um, but prior to that, I, I flew the, this airplane, a uh, type of airplane, commercially. And then before that, uh, many years before that, in the military. So is this a bit of a different, uh, a different flight for you guys? Is there different uh, emotions tied to this? Oh, yes. This, um, you know, it's, it's unique uh, and special to do it. It's sad that it's, it's the end of the road for, you know, the last flight of Discovery. Uh, the one that's going to be the most tough for me will be in September with Endeavour because that will be the complete end of, of the last flights for the airplane. So let's talk about the plane itself. This is a NASA 905. This is one of this is the original one, right? This is uh, this is the oldest of the two. We had another one that's NASA 911 that's been uh, uh, decommissioned, correct? That's correct. Uh, 905 was the original SCA. It was used for the approach and landing test when Enterprise uh, was flown off the back. Uh, it carried all the orbiters until the first trip that 911 made, which I was on, was carrying an Endeavour from Palmdale to uh, KSC. That's amazing. That's amazing stuff. So I appreciate you guys joining us today. We'll, uh, we'll definitely be watching you uh, on the 17th whenever you guys take off. I think you're due to take off uh, early, early in the morning, aren't you, from KSC? 7 o'clock is our scheduled time. All right, well, listen, you guys, thanks again for joining us. You guys have a safe trip, and, uh, again, we'll be watching. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Once again, that was Jeff Moultrie, the uh, shuttle carrier aircraft pilot, and Henry Taylor, who is the uh, flying engineer on board that, that uh, NASA aircraft that's going to be taking Discovery uh, on its final flight from the Kennedy Space Center coming up on uh, April 17th up to uh, Washington, D.C., where it will be put on display for everybody to stop by and take a look at this, uh, this uh, great spacecraft that has uh, served NASA for more than three decades.